Hello all, I am Siddharth Kaul and I welcome you to Edupedia World. In this video, we are going to take a look at data analysis through MATLAB. Data analysis, it is one of the key factors that makes MATLAB stand out from other conventional languages like C, C++ or Java. The ease with which we can pre-process data, summarize it, visualize it and model it is just amazing. There are four key features in data analysis. Pre-processing that is considering the outliers and missing value and smooth the data to identify possible models. Then we have summarizing that computes the basic statistics to describe the overall location, scale and shape of data. Visualizing is plotting the data to identify patterns and trends. And modeling that gives the data trends fuller description and suitable for predicting new values. Pre-processing data. First thing is data analysis is to pre-process the available data. By pre-processing I mean that we load the data into suitable variable and sort out the good data from the bad data. This will assure that we will be deriving meaningful conclusion from the available data. Here I have shown a snapshot of the data that I have loaded in the MATLAB workspace. Data is highlighted in column or in a row depending on what data you are dealing with and what is populated. Here I have loaded a data available in MATLAB that is default count.dat. This contains hourly traffic counts. So each row is an hourly traffic counts at three intersections. So each column is of intersection and each row is the hourly traffic count. So to load the count data, we use the command load and pass the parameters count.dat. This will load the data into the workspace in the variable count. Now handling the missing data. The MATLAB not a number that is NAN value is normally used to represent missing data. NAN values allows variables with missing data to maintain this structure. In this case 24 by 3 array with consistent indexing across all three intersections. So here I am checking the data for NAN for all the three intersections using isNAN function. So isNAN function is a function that returns a logical vector that is the same size as that is c1, c2 and c3 with entries indicating the presence 1 or absence 0 of NAN values for each of the 24 elements in the data. In this case the logical values sum to 0 so there are not NAN values in all the three columns of our data. NAN values are in introduced into the data in the section where I am going to cover in outliers the outliers. Every now and then data values are captured that are dramatically different from the patterns in the rest of the data. They might be due to measurement error or they might represent significant features in the data. Identifying these outliers and deciding what to do with them depends on the understanding of the data and its source. One common method for identifying outliers is to look for values more than a certain number of standard deviation sigma from the mean mu. The following code plots a histogram of the data at the third intersection together with lines at mu and mu plus n for n is equal to 1 and 2. So I have written a code as a script to be executed but that can be easily typed on the command window to easily understand what each step does. As seen previously c3 is the data from intersection 3. Hist function basically bins the element of y into 10 equally spaced containers and returns the number of elements in each container. Bin counts has the data that how many elements are there in each division. We calculate mean using function mean and passing c3. We calculate standard deviation using function std and passing c3. We plot the histogram now and I will show the plot on the next slide. But I will add few more things to the graph. First I will add the mean on the graph that will plot a red line saying that this value is the mean of all the data. Second I will add the first standard deviation using line 8. And the third another a second standard deviation using line 9 providing me with a range of acceptable deviation. If anything goes beyond this second standard deviation we can take a call whether to ignore those values or accept them as features. I will plot these to the existing histogram. I will turn on the legend and put the data mean and standard deviation on it. 
Now we can take a look at the graph. On the left side, you can see the histogram. The plot shows that some of the data are more than two standard deviation above the mean. Now it is completely up to us whether to identify these data points as error and replace them as not a number or accept them as a feature. What I will do is, I'll put them as error just to show how to replace data with not a number. So first I will identify these points using the line 1 as shown. This will populate outliers with the index of violating data and then we can replace these violations using not a number as shown in line 3. Here we get the index and then we replace the index with not a number. Now smoothing and filtering data. When we plot this new set of data that is populated with not a number, we get a plot that looks something like this. It's not a pretty looking plot but it's a plot nevertheless. So you can clearly see the point where we have populated the set with not a number values. The NAN causes a break in the plot which is okay, we can smooth this thing out. This is a characteristic of MATLAB plot that it ignores the NAN values in the set and continues with the plotting. Now moving to smoothing. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to apply a simple moving average smoother using the function convolution with n dimensions. So first I'm going to specify size as 3. I'm going to create a window of size 3 with 1s. Then to smooth out the data, I will pass C3M that is our data, the window that I created and parameter same that will allow me to return the data to be of same size as 33m. Now I'm going to plot this smooth data. The graph you see is the comparison of normal and the smooth data. The smooth data is represented as red. The extent of smoothing is controlled with the variable span that is the size of the averaging window. The averaging calculation returns NAN values whenever the smoothing window includes the NAN value in the data thus increasing the size of the gap in the smooth data. Another function that one can use for this smoothing purpose is filter function. As said before, the filter function is also used for smoothing data. Similar to before, we define the size of averaging window, that is 3. We define the window using the size and then using the function filter, we pass the window and the data through it. And then we get out and from that we get the smooth data and well we plot that smooth data. Here in the graph that you are seeing is I have plotted both our original data and the filtered smooth data simultaneously for comparison. One can clearly observe that smooth data has been shifted from the previous plot. The convolution with n dimension with the same parameters returns the central part of the convolution, the same length as the data. Filter returns the initial part of the convolution, the same length as the data. Otherwise, the algorithms are identical. Smoothing estimates the center of distribution of response values at each value of the predictor. It invalidates a basic assumption of many fitting algorithm, namely that the errors at each of the value predictors are independent. Accordingly, you can use smooth data to identify a model but avoid using smooth data to fit a model. This concludes our video on pre-processing data. Coming up next, we are going to take a look at summarizing data, visualizing data and modeling data. Until then, please stay tuned, subscribe and thanks for watching.